Hello, my name is Jean Marie Reagan, and on behalf of the Health Facilities Division of the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, I will be hosting this video presentation for the Medication Administration Curriculum. This course aid was designed to review with staff how to safely administer medications in settings authorized by law. These facilities and programs include personal care boarding homes, adult foster care facilities, alternative care facilities, residential child care facilities, secure residential treatment centers, residential facilities that provide treatment for mentally ill persons, services in support of persons with developmental disabilities funded and regulated by the Department of Human Services and state certified adult day programs. This video provides information on how to administer medications according to written physician orders, maintain proper documentation of the administration of both prescription and non-prescription drugs, and safely and accurately fill and administer medications to and from the medication reminder boxes with oversight from a licensed person or a qualified manager. There must be a written, signed physician's order for each prescription and non-prescription medication. There are six parts to a medication order. The first is the client's full name, then the date of the order, the name of the medication, the dosage, the route, and finally the doctor's signature. A qualified medication administration person may not accept verbal and telephone orders but may accept written physician's orders which are faxed. Always ask for assistance when unsure of an order, a medication, a label on a prescription bottle, a medication reminder box, or information written on the medication administration record. If an inconsistency is detected, the qualified medication administration person must not continue to administer medications until the discrepancy is resolved. It is important and necessary to translate written doctor's orders containing medical abbreviations into everyday terms. Each medication given to a client from the original container or from the medication reminder box must be charted on the medication administration record. The qualified medication administration person who personally administered the medication should record and initial each medication given in ink as soon as possible after the medication is administered. When starting a new medication administration record, it is important to copy only from the physician orders and not from the old medication administration record sheet. Initial only the medications that have personally been administered. If a charting mistake occurs, draw a single line through the mistaken entry and initial and date the error. If the medication cannot be administered or a client refuses a medication, then initial the appropriate box, circle the initials, provide an explanation on the back of the form, and contact the appropriate person. Draw one line through discontinued medications and highlight with a transparent marker. Then draw a line through the remaining boxes for the month. Transcribe new medications at the bottom of the list and draw X's through dated boxes up to the start date. When documenting the administration of a PRN, record the time given, the number of tablets, the reason for the medication, and then follow up with an update of the results. Always ask for assistance when unsure of an order, a medication, or information written on the medication administration record. 
If an inconsistency is detected, the qualified medication administration person must not continue to administer medications until the discrepancy is resolved. Each facility that chooses to use medication reminder boxes will be responsible for developing, implementing, monitoring, and enforcing the policies and procedures used in filling the medication reminder boxes. Medication reminder boxes must have a complete label including the name of the client, the name of each medication, both prescription and non-prescription, the dosage, the route, and the time that each medication is to be administered. The qualified medication administration person should take the following steps when checking and filling the medication reminder boxes. First compare the medication administration record to the physician's order. Then compare the medication administration record to the label on the medication reminder box. And finally, compare the medication reminder box to the label on the medication bottle. Always ask for assistance when unsure of an order, a medication, a label on a prescription bottle, or the procedure used in filling the medication reminder boxes. If an inconsistency is detected, the qualified medication administration person must not continue administering medication until the discrepancy is resolved. Medication reminder boxes should be filled in a safe, quiet, secured area, free of interruptions from staff, clients, and the telephone. Check medication reminder boxes prior to filling for cleanliness and good repair. Wash hands before filling medication reminder boxes. Only oral medications can be placed in the reminder box. Do not handle pills with fingers. Disposable gloves or rounded tweezers may be used to transfer medications one at a time from the bottle lid to the medication reminder box. Fill only one medication reminder box at a time and regulations prohibit filling reminder boxes for more than two weeks at a time. After filling, compare the number of medications that have been transferred to the medication reminder box to the medication reminder box's label. Medications that must be administered according to special instructions, such as PRN or ACPC medications, should not be placed in the medication reminder box. When there is a physician-ordered change in the client's medication, the facility must stop the use of the medication reminder box until the changes are made according to the new order. It is important to know the five rights of medication administration. The right client, the right time, the right medication, the right dosage, and the right route. There are standard procedures to follow in order to safely administer medications to clients. After you have read and compared the physician's order, the medication container, and the medication administration record, then gather the items that are necessary for the types of medications that are going to be administered. Next, wash your hands. It is the single most important measure to prevent the spread of infection. Carefully read the medication container label three times as an extra precaution to assure that the right medication is being administered. This should be done when removing the medication from the storage area, when pouring the medication from the container to the medicine lid or cup, and when returning the medication to the storage area. Identify and verify the right client. Then take the time to explain the administration procedure to the client. After administering the medication, dispose of any used materials and return the items to the storage area. Finally, document and sign the medication administration record. For each type of medication, there are steps that need to be followed in order to safely administer the medication to the client. Medications can be administered through a variety of routes. These routes include ingestion, application, inhalation, and insertion. We will begin with the administering of ingested medications. To avoid handling the medication, 
Pour the tablets or capsules into the lid of the container and then drop the medication into a medicine cup. There are several proven techniques that can be used to assist clients in swallowing medications. Have the client in a sitting position. Offer the tablets or capsules one at a time. In some cases, it may be necessary for the medication to be placed in the client's mouth toward the back of the tongue. Provide enough time for the client to take the medication and then allow the client to rest a short time. Some clients may request to have their medications crushed or split. Do not, however, crush enteric coated tablets or separate capsules. Remain with the client to be certain that all oral medications have been swallowed. Instruct the client that lozenges are not to be swallowed, but are to dissolve in the mouth. These medications should be given last after other oral medications, and liquids should be avoided until the medication has completely dissolved. As with lozenges, sublingual tablets are not to be swallowed, Liquids should be avoided until the medication has completely dissolved, and these medications should be administered last. Whereas lozenges may be placed anywhere in the mouth, sublingual tablets are to be placed under the tongue in the front part of the mouth. Check to see that the cap of the bottle is on securely. Read the instructions on the container to determine if the contents are to be shaken, as with suspensions. If necessary, use a rotating wrist movement to ensure a more thorough mixture. Next, remove the container's cap and place it with the open side up. Hold the bottle with the label toward the palm of the hand to avoid soiling the label. Then locate the marking on the medication cup for the amount of the medication to be poured. Pour the medication at eye level. Finally, clean the lip of the bottle with a disposable towel and securely recap the bottle with the lid. The next route deals with applications to the skin. Gloves must be worn whenever coming into contact with medication or a client's skin. Directions for the application of the medication should be a part of the physician's order or included with the instructions accompanying the medication. Ointments and lotions are applied directly to the skin for their antiseptic and or astringent effects. Liniments are rubbed into the skin quite vigorously to relieve soreness of the muscles and joints. Aerosols are sprayed onto the skin. Not touching the skin has advantages when the skin is irritated or burned. Gargles are solutions that are bubbled in the throat by keeping the solution in the upper throat, tilting the head back, and exhaling air to create bubbling. Transdermal patches, when applied to the skin, release a continuous and controlled dosage of medication over a specified time period. As with other medications, gloves must be worn when applying and removing the patches. If changing a patch, remove the old patch and wash the client's skin with soap and water at the new and old locations. It is important to rotate location sites to avoid skin irritation. To apply, peel off the back of the patch and press firmly onto the skin to assure adherence. To apply these types of medications, assist the client in sitting or lying down and tilt their head back. It is important to first cleanse the eyes. This requires a clean tissue, a clean wet washcloth, or a cotton ball. Always cleanse from the inside the eye near the nose to the outside. Use a clean tissue or cotton ball for each wipe. When applying eye ointments, start by instructing the client to look upward toward the top of their head. Retract the lower lid and approach the eye from out of the field of vision. 
Take special care to avoid contact with the eye and apply the ointment in a thin ribbon inside the lower lid. Applying eye drops is much the same as applying eye ointments. Begin with instructing the client to look upward toward the top of their head. Retract the lower lid and approach the eye from out of the field of vision. It may be necessary to separate the eyelids. With care to avoid contact with the eye, apply the ordered dosage of eye drops to the center of the lower lid. Do not allow the drop to fall more than one inch before it contacts the lid. If the client is lying down, make sure that the surface is flat and turn their head to the opposite side. A client in a sitting position should have their head tilted sideways until the ear is as horizontal as possible. Clean the external ear canal with a clean tissue or cotton ball. Then hold the ear in such a manner to allow visualization of the ear canal and instill the ordered number of drops without touching the dropper to the client's external ear. If drops are to be instilled in both ears, place a cotton ball in the external portion of the first ear before turning the head to instill drops into the other ear. Instruct the client to lie quietly a short time to allow the medication to reach the eardrum. Administer the nose drops with the client lying down and their head extended over a pillow. The client may be in a sitting position for nasal sprays. In either case, avoid touching the dropper or the spray nozzle to the client's nose. For nose drops, place the nose dropper just inside the nostril and instill the ordered number of drops. Instruct the client to remain with their head tilted back for a short time. To administer nasal sprays, have the client sniff on the count of three as you squeeze the nasal spray. This will help to coordinate the client's sniffing with the application of the medication. Another option is to close one nostril while spray is applied to the other nostril. The next route that we will be discussing is the administering of inhalants. Administer the inhalant with the client in a sitting position. Read the instructions on the inhaler to determine if the medication is to be shaken. Remove the mouthpiece cover and hold the dispenser approximately one inch from the client's mouth. If a spacer on the dispenser is used, it may be placed into the mouth between the teeth. Instruct the client to exhale, and on the count of three, to breathe in deeply as you dispense the medication. Then, if possible, they should hold their breath for 10 seconds before exhaling. Wipe off the mouthpiece or spacer before replacing the mouthpiece cover. Finally, we will be discussing the insertion of medications. For both rectal and vaginal suppositories, remove the protective covering and then place them in a medicine cup. Disposable gloves are to be worn for the insertion of these types of suppositories. When administering rectal suppositories, assist the client to lie down, preferably on their left side. Visualize the anal opening, then lubricate and insert the suppository approximately three inches so that it is beyond the internal sphincter muscle of the rectum. Instruct the client to retain the suppository for as long as possible. With vaginal suppositories and creams, start by instructing the client to lie on her back in a frog leg position. Vaginal suppositories are inserted two to three inches into the vaginal orifice. For the insertion of a vaginal cream, draw the cream into the applicator according to the package instructions. To insert a vaginal cream, grasp the barrel of the applicator and place the thumb on the plunger. Pointing the applicator slightly downward, insert the applicator into the vagina as far as it will comfortably go, and then push the plunger with the thumb as the applicator is slowly removed from the vagina. The rectal and vaginal suppositories and creams are best administered at bedtime, but at a minimum, the client should remain lying down for 15 to 30 minutes. The administering of medications is a vital service that you provide to your clients. To perform this service in a manner that promotes the health and welfare of your clients takes knowledge and practice. We hope that this video has given you a helpful review on how to safely administer medications. 
Thank you for watching.